This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Mading Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Ashwin, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are varied. The July, uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place, which was very unfortunate. Including uh, country-specific ones, uh, which... Uh, and the rebellion continued, continued to be... Fixing ideas for the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Ading Or. This week, a look at the impact of young leaders in South Sudan. The youth are the majority in the new nation, but can they help turn things around for the better? Are young leaders a good idea for fixing this nation? With us, for the show, Mr. Agal Ring Macha, Chairman of SPLMIO Information Committee and Press Secretary in the office of the first Vice President, General Taban Deng. We are happy to welcome him to Fixing the Nation. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. <clears throat> How are you today? I am fantastic. Our country is the youngest nation in the world and also as the youngest population. Is that a plus or a minus? It's a double-edged knife. Uh, if well managed, uh, it is an asset and a resource that can push us to the next level. Uh, if mismanaged, uh, it, can, uh, it can be a force for destruction. Uh, when we talk about young leaders, what are we talking about? Uh, young leaders, many people vary. Uh, there are those who think uh, that people up to 45 years uh, or beyond or below that. Uh, but that's what I consider a young person. And why is it better to argue that young leaders can make the difference in South Sudan? Can they make a difference in South Sudan? Absolutely. Mm, uh, they can and they are already trying to do so. Uh, as you have mentioned in your introduction, uh, about 70% of the population are men of young people. So ignoring 70% of your population cannot fix your country and cannot take you forward. Uh, uh, concentrating on that and trying to make them vibrant and try to make them uh, a positive force uh, will definitely take your country forward. They are also energetic, uh, they are idealistic, uh, very, very resourceful, uh, fearless. Uh, so there's a lot of attributes uh, attributed to young people. And we have seen that uh, in our history, uh, that young people have always been the one uh, that took us to the next level, whether it is in Nyanya 1, uh, when those of Joseph Lago in their 30s took over the leadership of Nyanya 1, or in 1983, when those of Dr. John Garang, uh, current president Salfa Kir Mayadi, those of Karbino Kwanyinbol, who were all in their 30s, took leadership of the liberation of our country and took us for 21 years until we became independent. So young people have always had this uh, darefulness, fearlessness, uh, uh, that are easy to take initiative uh, and face challenges that face society. Uh, so this is nothing new. Uh, the challenges that faces us this time, uh, young people can play a major role uh, in turning the country around and trying to fix this social fa fabric that has been torn uh, by these uh, political differences. That so we see you in the said that it's a double-edged sword. They mm -hmm. can swing either way, That's negative right. or positive. That's right. And certainly they can be a force for good. That's and right. you have said historically that has happened. Mm -hmm. And can it be repeated now? You're saying young people, for them uh, to play a major role in South Sudan, what opportunities do they need? What do they need to get to the next level? First of all, they need to be organized. Organization, organization, organization. Uh, if you are not organized, you are unable to put all your ideas together and get them into something meaningful. Uh, and that is the challenge that has faced uh, the youth in, the, in the, this country, is that they have been unable to organize themselves in, under a national uh, organization that has the national character. In absence of that, the youth have now 
it is integrated into tribal and regional organizations uh, that continue to tear the country apart. During the SPLM, SPLA uh, liberation struggle, there was talk of the Red Army That's being right. the seats of the nation and that at some point they will take over. Mm. Is now the time or the time is, is not yet? Uh, for, now is the time. Uh, of course... Uh, have those seats germinated? Uh, we have germinated. Uh, when, uh, when President Salfa, who was charged with this responsibility, was talking to us as a, as a seed of the nation, he was exactly around my age now, in mid-80s. Uh, so, I you feel... You are 37? I'm 37, almost going to 38. Uh, so that's around where he was at that age, when he was telling us that we are the seed for the nation, we are the custodians of the mission and vision. He said it very clearly, uh, that uh, from here I'm going to front line, uh, and all ideas in my head, I can easily fall in an ambush or, or, uh, or fall in an attack or anything. If that happens, these ideas, you keep them because you will continue the fight after we've gone. Uh, so we are the custodian, we have those energy uh, with us and we feel like time is now uh, for them to start uh, recognizing that there was, a, there, was, there was a young generation that was trained uh, and indoctrinated uh, in the mission and vision of the SPLM to free the people of South Sudan, not only from, from oppression but also from, uh, from ignorance, uh, from bad health, from, uh, from, uh, from all the ills uh, that has befell the people of South Sudan. Uh, for many years. We talk broadly about the contribution of youth, not just the Red Army, mm -hmm. but all the youth and all the young uh, people in South Sudan. And you said already uh, there is that fragmentation. People have been divided along tribal lines. So how different are the young people from, from the elders who are seen to have, uh, in a way, uh, to have done things in the wrong way, in a tribal way? What 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 is the different thing that young people are contributing or will contribute? Of course, uh, we are not any really different from our elders when they were young because we are from them. We are genetically the same people. Uh, and we can rise up to the challenge the way they did when they were young. Uh, I can say right now that we have had a false start since 2011. Uh, the youth of this country have had a bad start. Uh, we have been divided. Uh, too much on tribal lines, on uh, regional lines, uh, but it is possible for us to turn things around. And it's about leadership. Uh, we haven't been able to have proper youth leadership in the country in the last five, six years. Uh, just like what they did in, in, in history, is that uh, before those of John Garan came in 1983, there were people who were there trying to lead the war of liberation, the so-called Nyanya II, who were there in the 70s, uh, for a few years before those of John Garan came. They did not make uh, the same impact that those of John Garang and President Salfa did. Uh, it's because of the type of leadership that they were providing and how visionary they were. Is it about leadership or is it the fact that the youth themselves are ill-equipped? They are not. When we talk about 70% of the population, that is certainly a large number of population. And do they have the requisite uh, opportunities uh, to be able to, to, to take over the leadership at some point? It is the youth leadership that must organize the youth and turn them into national leaders. It is the youth leadership that provides opportunities. And we have seen it in, in the region. Uh, there are many programs that are available that everybody knows could have been done by the youth leadership in this country uh, to prepare the youth for leadership. What is the end goal? Is it leadership? Or when we talk about leadership, we have a broad understanding of that. Because mm -hmm. there are many roles that can be taken over in the country economy is very sensitive and the youth are not playing a meaningful uh, uh, role uh, in it. Uh, we talk about politics, which seem to be where the emphasis is going. Uh, we talk about all aspects of the society. So the, 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 youth empowerment is really a huge program that needs resources. That's right. And resources are not the ones that bring ideas. Our good ideas are the ones that raises resources. Uh, politics is centered to this because leadership is important for, uh, for economic empowerment of youth, uh, for, uh, for youth to be empowered in the civil society, in the, in the military and other areas. You need proper leadership. Uh, Masalan, for example, uh, the, the youth union, there are many programs that they can learn from uh, in how the other countries 
have empowered their youth. For example, the program that the, the Kenyans have called the, the, uh, the Youth Service, the National Youth Service, uh, where all the youth from different tribes are put in this paramilitary organization <clears throat> that trains them patriotism and self-sacrifice uh, and technical trainings, okay, whether it is carpentry, uh, construction, uh, electrical work, and so forth, to prepare them for workforce within those places. This is the areas where the military and the police and the rest of organized forces pick their youth from. So the youth are taught from early age about how to interact together and live together with diversity. You know, such programs could be introduced. <coughs> uh, programs like uh, Na National Youth Bank, uh, where youth can be put into cooperatives uh, from, the, from, the, from the grassroots. Uh, agricultural programs could be done to help uh, youth uh, empower the agricultural revolution in the country. Uh, that we need. Uh, there are many programs that the youth leadership can do to prepare the youth themselves to emerge and take proper leadership of, of the country. Uh, and we have been disenfranchised uh, and we have been made uh, to go into tribal groupings uh, and follow our tribal leaders uh, because there's well, this so much energy, uh, if not channeled in the right direction, it will always channel, channel itself uh, in the wrong direction. Just like a, a wave of water, if you block them here, they will always find a way to try and make them way. So it's about us looking into ourselves and try to get the proper leadership uh, that, uh, that, that let's take a break from you thank you very much welcome to local media services we have so many services for you such as video production camera hiring sound system hiring event management passport photo Stand up comedy, printing, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dol Comedia Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingor, and with us is Mr. Agar Ring Machar, the chairman of the SPLMIO Information Committee and the press secretary in the office of the first vice president. General Taban Deng. And we are talking about the impact of young leaders. What difference can the youth make? And when we talk about youth leadership, let's talk about your story. Let's talk about you because at some point you were the interim chairman of the National Youth Union and also was the president of the political parties youth forum. So you were at the forefront of youth leadership and what were you trying to do when you were holding those positions? And were you on track and, you were, and then you were cut off? Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. You have, you have mentioned two organizations. One is the Political Parties Youth Forum. Uh, it is a combination of the Youth League of the then 17 registered political parties in the country. The idea of that was simple. The youth should not be divided on political parties. Our agenda as youth whether we belong to SPLM, SPLM DC, or uh, Social Democratic Party, or whichever party you come from, we have the same agenda of youth empowerment and preparing the youth for future leadership. Uh, so let's work together. So uh, we created that forum where all the youth leagues from all the 17 political parties could meet in one place and share notes and, and try to influence their political parties to be more united uh, because we've, we form the majority of those political parties. So it was about unity of political forces in the country. That was the intention of that. That was going very well. Uh, it was from that platform that the Minister, the Minister of Youth and Sport, Dr. Nadia Rope, called on me to organize a youth union. I was given a mandate for three months to organize a youth union as, as let's say, the, the electoral committee to try and go to the 10 states by then, bring up the youth and make them elect their leadership and also prepare them to set a good constitution and a good strategic framework for, for, their, for their activities, both short-term and long-term. Uh, one month into that, we ran into trouble, uh, and the minister fired me. Uh, from my, terminated my three months' uh, work that we had with her. Uh, so I went back to political parties, uh, Youth Forum, which was the, the body that I was to lead for, uh, for three years. Uh, we ran into trouble because, as the leader of the organizing committee, uh, there were... Uh, you disagreed. Yes. To put it mildly. We disagreed. We disagreed on, uh, on the way to organize the youth. Uh, 
Let's just say that you disagree. We disagreed, yes. And what happened from there? Uh, the disagreement basically is, is, what, is what caused the, the most of the problem because uh, it brought me in, con in, uh, in coalition with the, with the system. Uh, I insisted that uh, this has to be done in a certain way for it to produce the type of leader that the youth need. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't to be the one because I'm the one organizing. Uh, but I was to remain truthful and uh, faithful to the youth because they were looking up to me to organize them you, and get them a proper... You fled the country. Uh, well, uh, that, is, that, is, uh, that is not the reason I fled the country. Uh, I had differences with the system. You fell main... out with the system and you went and joined the rebellion. Why? And I joined the movement. Did one thing lead to the other? There are many series of things that happened, uh, but this is what I was putting that uh, people have disagreed with the system. They went out through different agreements. I'm talking they... about your particular disagreement. What happened? What this made is... you leave and this join is... the rebellion? Many people have different reasons for leaving over the last few years. I'm talking about your reasons for leaving. Well, I'd still the same thing. The system uh, doesn't, doesn't accommodate your, uh, your ideas. Uh, and uh, no. and when, they, when they can't, you must look for a way to, to make your ideas go on. This is what politics is about. Is that about ideology and your ideas? Uh, and if your ideas have no place uh, in the system, then there is no point for you to be in the system. You can either retire, become a farmer, or look for another organization and that will put case, forward. In this case, you took up arms. You became, you rebelled against that system. Of course. Why? Because of many reasons that will not be proper for me to discuss them now, and here especially is, now. Here is what you have said on record. You have said that the status quo is unsustainable and the current leadership in the country is too deformed to be reformed and therefore there is an urgent and pressing need of a total revolutionary overhaul of the system. This responsibility falls squarely on the shoulders of the youth of South Sudan. Thinking about the fact that you were organizing the youth and then calling for a total overhaul of the system. Mm -hmm. What this, justified all this? These are, these are not inconsistent. These are consistent things. Is that the, the first option is to organize the youth in a peaceful manner within the same system. That is the first option. But when you are faced with difficulties, you must look for other ways to make sure that the youth are organized and they take over their country and drive it in the right direction. And so now, they are not inconsistent. Now you found yourself mobilizing the youth to fight against the country. You wanted the youth to be a force for God. And now the youth became a force for uh, for, for bad. These are not inconsistent things. Uh, even the current leadership, when we were one Sudan, we were all brothers. And uh, for many years they have decided to give a chance to the system that was in place uh, to be able to change things. And when they did not, sometimes you are forced to pick up arms and defend your own country against the sitting system. That is part of patriotism. You talk about patriotism is not, is not loyalty to government. Patriotism is loyalty to your country. And sometimes you may be forced to fight your government on behalf of your country. And when we talk about a country, you are talking about a country where uh, over 70 percent of the population are young people. That's right. And because your interest was not accommodated, you had to rebel. What and this seems to be uh, what many young people are doing. For them to advance in life, you must rebel and come back. Now you have so many titles that you didn't have before. Is that the impact of young leaders? That you, have, you must look for power by all means necessary, which you have also used. That is, that is, that is simplistic. Uh, many people who have left did not leave because they were hungry or they did not have position. For example, the current first vice president, when he left here, you wouldn't believe that he went to Pagak or went all the way on his foot to go and look for food. The former governor of Unity State, you know he was content. He can leave without politics and he can feed himself for many years. We all know that. So not everybody who left we was... We are talking was, about you no, I'm and just the coming. I'm just coming. Left. I'm coming. Not everybody who does that. When I left from here, you were interviewing me. And now you are interviewing me. There is nothing that has changed. When I left here, I was a surgeon since 1988. Now I'm still a surgeon since 1988. There's not a lot that has changed. A press secretary, uh, it, it is not a big position. It is actually... Uh, it's not a political position. Uh, it is... A, it is it, for, for me as a leader of the youth of all the political parties, to me I see it as better than the current positions that I have. I have. Number two, all the youth that are left here, all my groups, the people who are doing political work together, are all ministers. Okay? Look at uh, Ajwet, Ajwet Mohan Mawir, who was my deputy. 
is a minister in, 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 in Warapa and then became a minister in Kiji State. Madin Malik is a minister of information in, uh, in, in Tonj. Uh, Lado Jebeke is a minister of information in uh, Terekeka. Lam Tungwar, who was my deputy in the interim youth union, is a minister of information. So all of us are up, whether you are in Juba or you are, it doesn't matter. Because not many, many, many young people left with the Choriak. So you have not made any gain from the revolution? I have made gains in the fact that agreements have been signed that have brought transformation. There are reforms in those agreements. This is the change we are talking about. It's not change of position. Because not everybody, it's not about where you are that you make it. It's about who you are. Because there are many young people that went into rebellion, but you have never heard from them, and you are not interviewing them. So it is not about where you are. It's about what you can contribute as an individual. And for me as an activist, I would have contributed whether I'm under President Selfa, under General Taban, or under the Korea. It doesn't matter where I am. I will contribute, just like most of my friends who have become ministers. In fact, they are ahead of me now. Yeah. When, I, when I came back here, when I came back here, they are the one who received me. Uh, some of them have bodyguards, some of them have drivers, and I'm still I'm still individual. So uh, I did not leave my concrete house to go to Pagat to live in a touch house and in a tent uh, because I was looking for a, for a position. What position else do you want as a youth when you are the top youth leader in the country? What else do you want? There are a lot of things that you have said, and mm. when you look at what has happened, mm. uh, because you know young leaders have impact mm. and rebellion has impact. People have died as a result of, That's right. of the revolution. That's right. And is that regrettable? When it's you look at the whole movie that has been happening and now coming back and not a lot has changed, what you were calling for has not changed that much. So you have settled for what is there, for the status quo. So we, do you regret the we, past in which I, you I have gone? I can never do that. I can never do that. And for those of you who think that this government after we've come, is the same government of before 2013, then you are not, uh, you are has, not, you are, you are not, you are not a king. Changed? You talk about reforms, what has changed? We are working through our differences. Okay? We are working through our differences. We have committed ourselves to ARCES. And you have read ARCES and all the eight chapters, okay, ranging from economic reforms, security sector reforms, public service reforms, uh, the current power sharing, uh, the, the representation, some of the issues that have been addressed in ARCES, and some of the issues that have been addressed in Arusha Agreement, where the leadership has admitted that they have lost vision and mission, uh, for me, is a huge progress. The fact that the leadership entirely, from Chairman President Salfa, all the way, the members of the Politburo and the members of the Secretary, admitting that they have lost direction from where we started in 1983, is an achievement. Have you, so it is, it is have not, you a, not also lost direction? Because you started by mobilizing the youth in support of the government. You were supporting President Salfa. And then you were supporting Riek Machar and now Taban Dengai. And who knows who else is coming. So you are not consistent. And when we talk about young leaders as an idea for fixing South Sudan, Madingor, all this inconsistency Madingor, is not Madingor, leading the, the youth in the right direction. Would you agree? I will not agree. You know why? When you talk about consistency, I am consistent to a principle. I am not consistent to an individual. These are two different things. Being consistent to an individual leader, even if he has done wrong, and being consistent to your principle is what matters. Okay? And my principle is a peaceful, prosperous South Sudan. That's mine. If President Selfa achieves... Well, you uh, join uh, a uh, rebellion. Uh, is, that, is that peaceful? And a rebellion can be a tool to bring about more prosperous countries. It country. was a violent revolution. There is no revolution that is not violent. Most revolutions that are armed are violent. The revolution that gave birth to South Sudan was violent. So by the, by the fact that the revolution is violent doesn't make it bad. It is for what end that matters. So not violent revolutions are all bad. Most of our heroes, uh, let's say Dr. John Garang, led a violent revolution that killed a lot of people, a lot of South Sudanese people, whether, whether Junubin or Northerners, they're all Africans. But he's a hero. So being a part of violent revolution by itself is not bad, but for what end? You know, so for me, it is about a principle, and that principle is not followed by that leader, then there is no point for me to attach myself to that leader no, long, no more. So the first choice was, of course, to say with President Salfa, who has, who has this legitimacy as the only surviving member of the, of, the, of the permanent members that formed the movement. But if things were not going right after him, that forced me to pick up arms, of course, the movement then split. I stood back for a few months to see which leader 
conforms to my principles. But my you way. accuse others of betrayal. Wait, others wait. who went on to join uh, Tabanding, you accuse them of betrayal. And, and in I'm, just a few I'm coming, months, I'm coming, you join I'm them. coming, I'm coming. I stayed off. Of course, what has happened in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the leadership, it will take you time to understand in full. Okay? Others could call it a coup. Others could call it rescuing the country after the fight between the, the bodyguards of the president and the first vice president, the former first vice president. For me, I had to take time to assess which of the two leaders conform with my principles. And as Dictor Red veered off and diverted the rebellion into Equatoria, where civilians were being targeted based on ethnicities on highway, and he was unable to condemn such things, for me, that lost the track of my principle. And I cannot continue uh, with the same leader just to be consistent. So you are I have rational to be in all this? Of course. You of are course, taking decisions my, based, based on my personal, what I see as principle for the, for the better South Sudan. If you do this thing, I will follow you. Like the way Gerald Tabandenga is doing currently. Managing the agreement peacefully and uh, cooperatively with the president. If he does something that is not what I think is good for the country, why would you expect me to continue to be with him? Just so that I can say I'm consistent. You cannot, you cannot be consistent when things are not going correct. But would you be supporting him if you didn't have a senior position? I, never, I, have, I came here now for, for a year. The press secretary, it was last week that I was appointed last week. But for a whole year, I wasn't appointed. And this, and this party position, this movement position, are not position per se. We are not an established political party like SPLM, where a secretary for information is a position where, with an office. Let's okay. come back to so our... for a year, for a year I have stayed without employment. In fact, for the last three years, I have stayed without employment. And you're going back to our theme of mm -hmm. fixing the nation. That's right. Young leaders, can they help fix the nation? When you look at these confused positions that, are, that they have taken, mm -hmm. is, is it, what difference can they make? A lot of difference. A lot of difference because uh, uh, dealing with fixing the country, it doesn't mean that you remain clean. When you are cleaning your house, you cannot remain clean. It means that you have to get involved in debt to clean up debt. But what is inside us, as history has always shown, is that we, we are idealistic, we are patriotic, we love our nation, and whatever we do, we do it with the best intention for the country. But while you are in a messy situation, like those of John Garang, for example, they had to get their boots, they had to get bloody for them to give us a free country. So if you want to fix South Sudan while wearing a white shirt and a tie, sitting here in Juba, South Sudan is not going to get fixed. People I'm have asking, to be killed. I'm asking the people, I'm asking the youth. People to get, have to be killed for South Sudan to be a better place. It doesn't have to be. But if you are forced to defend yourself, sometimes you must defend your ideas with your life. What is it that young people are not getting that they should be aspiring towards? What is it they're getting in this current, currently in the country? They have, they have, they they have been deployed to NILPAD, to national security in business, in governance, some have been governors. So young people are indeed part and parcel of the governance. But is there any difference that they are making? When we said we are 70%, we are talking about over 7 million people. When you say they are governors, we cannot have 7 million governors. By having a young person as a governor doesn't mean that the youth are, are empowered. But that it, is it, participation. It, it is, it, that is something else. Youth empowerment is when all these youth, majority of them, are put in employment. And the government cannot employ all of us. It's about how, what policies the government put in place to, 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 to empower the private sector, to empower the youth. What sort of training and capabilities? For example, now most of the work that our youth could be doing are being done by foreigners. It's because there are no programs to train and empower the youth in this country so that they take on these jobs, so that they can take care of their families and raise families and get married and move on in life like all the citizens of other countries. So it is not about me, for example, being press secretary, and that's it, the youth is finished. No. That's why I'm still here, saying that the youth must organize and must be empowered. Because if, if, if it is the press secretary that I wanted, of course I would have taken it and sit back. But I'm still here speaking to you, saying that the youth of this country are disenfranchised, they are disheartened, they are disorganized, they have been tribalized and regionalized, and they need to come together under a common cause to rescue the, the, the tone social fabric in their country. For South Sudan to be a better place. For South Sudan to be fixed. This is, this, is the, this is my mission. And that's why even if I'm chosen as, uh, as the leader of the whole political party's youth forum in the country, I still want to push forward. And I still had to, to, to sacrifice uh, my, my, my position here, go back to the bush, sacrifice, uh, risk my life 
with my family so that uh, South Sudan goes in the right direction. Gail Ring, thanks and for coming on Fixing South Sudan. Thank you very much. Thank and that much. is Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. With me, Madengor, what is your idea for fixing the nation? Join me on a one-on-one -on -one debate. Let's debate about our country.